float, right? So the task of this, because these are submarines, we work for the Fortress Naval Shipyard, where we work with submarines, is to add these weights and try to find the perfect point to where this is at neutral buoyancy. So it's floating in the water. It's not sunk to the bottom and it's not floating on top. It's, it's suspending in the middle of the water. And if you can achieve that, then you'll get your own Whoa, it's a challenge. Absolutely it is. Alright. Oh, I got the borrow one. I, I left one. I, I was going to my list of things or something. Alright, so you wanted to know how does this thing ride with those wheels like that? So, so the last thing we need is a controller oh, it's, seat. It's not called Tim's Drive, it's four. One this one goes back. That makes sense because they're using they're using this hand to control the extra stuff. So four, backwards. And then watch this. This one will make it spin, I believe. Oh no, this one makes it straight. So you can go side to side. Now this one. And yeah, try okay. to see what happens if you push them in the opposite directions. Actually, you know what? I think you're ready to ride. So put okay, that yeah, one up and that one down. Yeah. yeah. These little robots that do things based on the color sequence that they see. There's little sensors in the bottom. And so when you let them follow the line, since they can sense where the line is, they'll do certain actions based on what order you've put the little color codes in. These are called uh, either Ozobots or Ozobots. So a little like that one will make it do a spin. And so the, we try and connect what this is doing with what the shipyard and how the shipyard uh, operates. So for instance, when we're repairing the submarine, uh, you know, we write technical instructions for the, uh, the workers on the waterfront that they follow in a sequence to get the job done properly and make sure that the submarine's safe. Going to the beach? Do you ever driven one of these? No? Yeah, never. never even seen one. So this is a submersible robot. It's got some motors for propulsion and for submerging and surfacing. It is the remote control. Yep, I'm just going to get this all tangled. You just one backwards and you'll, you'll turn. You can use the buttons on the front to either dive or surface. There. That's a little bit cloudy. The water is... Uh, we can fix that for a robot. So you could use something like this with a camera on it, and you could look at like a, a bottom of the boat. You could look at a, you could look at a wharf, or just play around in a lake with it. But something like this has a real-world use. Um, we use them on the shipyard so we can look at underneath the submarine and do inspections without sending people in the water. And we can also look at um, our piers that we tie the submarines up to to check for inspections or damage. Um, a little bit more advanced than these are, but these are a pretty simple um, little robot that really anybody can build. If you have, yeah, and it's, uh, it's just, it's a sea perch kit, uh, and you can, It's it's hard to control. Yeah, I remember doing this last year when I was that. There you go. Yeah. Oh, drive right. Oh, you had it. Lighter than the others. Okay. Uh, see how that works. Yeah. 
that works. Right, I'm gonna try this one. Okay, okay. Let's see what happens. Toss it right in. Almost, almost. It's a little more weight. A little more weight. Oops. Oh yeah, it's not touching. No. There it is. I'll count it. <laughs> you did it. You did it. You know what that means? You get a very cool submarine to take home with you. Great job. Actually, it doesn't seem as bad. It's only, I'm gonna try it. Let's just see. 